Hi everyone, welcome back to the You Too Can Show with Okta. Today I have Tolu here with me, my trading mentee, and as usual, we're navigating through the essentials of Forex trading and we're trying to work hard towards her goal of earning her first $1,000 in trading. Tolu, how's the trading journey going? It's been interesting. Yep. Quite a journey if you ask me. That's fantastic yes. to hear. The journey, like they usually say, the journey of a thousand miles begin with one single step. Mm -hmm. So are there any specific, you know, challenges or problems or victories as well that you would like to share with me and everyone watching today? Challenges, not really. I would say just more questions, basically. Um, okay, so trying to trade and then I discover different stuff. And sometimes I'm wondering, okay, what is this? Does this work? And all of that. So more of questions, basically. More of questions. All right. Can yes. you can you ask me the questions? For everyone watching, you can also go ahead and let me know the challenges you're facing and ask me questions in the comment section. Yeah, Tolu. Okay, so for instance, I get to see, um, if you remember from the previous episodes we had, yeah. talking about um, um, having a trading journal and all of that. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to like, have one of one of the ways to relieve stress yes one of the ways to relieve stress is to re limit the um currency pairs and all that you you trade with you don't want it to be too too many so that yeah. you're not overwhelmed so i noticed on the octa trader app that there is there are there is this um thing where you can follow some currency pairs and then get latest updates economic news and and the likes about it and then i yeah. get to see this these pairs, for instance, maybe something like, like um, Euro USD, and I'm like, okay, I'm seeing everything, and then I get to see the current news and maybe like trade, and I'm wondering, is this a good time to trade? Uh, so I, I'm I'm thinking, how do I know the best time to trade? So actually place a trade. Is it is it safe to just place a trade at any time, or how do I get to know the best time to? place a trade after i've okay checked the candlesticks i've read the news and everything how do i actually know the best time to place a trade yeah that's one question that i've been thinking about yeah then another question that has been popping in my mind is about pending orders yeah so i um, placed a normal order and then also a pending order normal order at first, I was confused with the app. Like, yeah. why is it that some 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 trades are taking more than twenty four hours to execute, and why is it that some execute immediately? So I realized it was pending order, and it was um I, I don't know what it's called, but I, let me say normal um market execution order. or instant execution. Market, okay, yes, instant execution. So for pending order, I'm wondering how it actually works because it was more like try and error. Yeah. What I did. Yeah, so I'm actually wondering how it really, really works. I know you mentioned it the last time, and you actually gave it as an assignment. You're yeah, like, place a pending order trade, which I did, but I still do not like understand the concept of pending order perfectly because I was just like, how come it is taking like longer than 24 hours for this particular trade to execute? Do you understand my question? Yeah. So I'm wondering how does pending order really work? What's, what's, you get my question? Yeah, yeah. What's it so... about really? So to define pending orders, um, it's just an order, a future order, right? You're telling your broker that you want to execute a buy or a sell when the market gets to this price. Now, that price can be above the current price or below the current price. Uh, I'm going to create, I'm going to have a session rather where I explain in details the different types of pending orders, how they work and how you can use them just so that you can understand uh, properly. Probably in the next section, uh, we'll do that. And for your question on how to know the exact time, you said after analyzing and identifying your key levels, when do you take the trade? The final confirmation I would say you should look out for is your candlestick. You know, we, I showed you how to read a candlestick live and I told you what you should look out for is the momentum in the candlestick, right? So that's what you want to look out for, yes. momentum in the candle. That's your final confirmation. After everything, after all is done, your analysis, your trend, you identify your key levels, you have multiple confluences. Your final confirmation is momentum of candle. The candlestick has to show you that we're about to go long or we're about to go short. Okay? But, I mean, for the all questions right. you've asked me, it, it sounds a lot like you're making good progress and you're practicing. And I want you to also understand that every challenge is a lesson in disguise. And before we go into today's um session i have a question for you have you been 
thinking about trading styles? Um, before I, before I answer your question, I still have a question about time. Okay. Okay. So I I I did a little research online and found out that there are times like maybe London time, then then Tokyo time, and something like yeah, that. New Does York. that have anything to also do with? Yes. Does that have any time to anything to do with the time I can also play trades? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. We're also going to um dive a bit deeper into trading times and sessions, you know, as we go um okay. as we go on with the mentorship session. But of course, it has something to do with your the times to trade because you, you're going to use your trading times and sessions to plan a schedule that can help you oh. trade at a, a more comfortable time. You know, so for example, if you get back home and it's like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., you can still trade the, the New York session. In the midnight, if you get back home like maybe 10 p.m., 9 p.m., you can trade the Tokyo session in the midnight, right? Just maybe use pending orders if you're not going to be awake in the midnight. But you can trade Tokyo session, you can trade the Japanese yen in the midnight. There'll be a good amount of volatility at that time. But like I said, I'll do an in-depth um, explanation on trading times and sessions, and also on pending orders, uh, probably in the next session, but I'll make sure that I cover that before the end of this mentorship so you can understand how to use them properly, okay? All right, then. Hi, guys. Lots of you have seen those deposit bonuses that Okta offers. However, not all of you know what a bonus is and how to apply it. So let me guide you through the process. Watch this video until the end and grab your 100% bonus for more profitable trading. Let's go. The deposit bonus increases your equity and free margin. It helps you open orders with a bigger volume. So here's how it works. If you make a $100 deposit and apply a 50% bonus, you'll get $150 for trading. This way, you can open more orders with a bigger volume, potentially increasing your profit. Now, let me show you how to use it. Log into your Okta profile. Find the promo code section in the side menu. Enter the promo code U2CAN and tap Activate. Initiate a new deposit method and choose your preferred payment method. You can choose from Instant Bank Transfers, Nigerian Local Bank, Skrill, Netseller, and many more. Claim your 100% bonus in the checkbox and complete the deposit process. And that's it. Now you know what a bonus is and how to apply it. Good luck. Today, we are going to talk about trading styles. And um, let me know in the comments, guys, for every one of you watching, what is your favorite trading style, uh, if you have? And uh, I'll go into details of the kind of trading styles that we have in the Forex market. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. And before we dive into the content, I'll just do a quick disclaimer. Any opinion, news, research, prices, analysis, or other information discussed in this training or linked to this presentation are provided as general market commentary and do not constitute investment advice. So what is Tolu going to learn today? We're going to look at how she can choose her trading style. We'll explore a lot of trading styles we have in the market. We'll also do an in-depth exploration, exploration of chart patterns and indicators. And in section two, we'll talk about support and resistance. We'll do a bit of a back testing. And I'll talk to her about the importance of backtesting. So are you ready? Yes, I am ready, 100%. Someone said that choosing a trading style is like finding, you know, the correct or the right dance partner. It should complement your strength and your preferences. Do you agree with that? I think so. Okay, I we're going to go ahead and break I, down I, yes. each trading style and strategies. We'll discuss, you know, potential return, the risk levels, so that you can know which one that falls in. Uh, or that fits into your personality. Are you a, are you a good dancer? Because you agreed to sadly no dance it. Oh, sadly no. Okay, but today we are going to talk about trading styles and trading strategies, and I'll go ahead to explore um different trading strategies we have in the financial markets for Tolu. All right. What are trading strategies? Now, trading strategies are techniques for trading stocks, bond, commodities, or derivatives to maximize profit and reduce risk. Strategies change depending on the asset class and investment style. We have day trading, swing trading, long-term investing, strategies 
change. Most well-known strategies include spotting trends, recognizing buy and sell signals, evaluating market conditions, and diversifying assets. They frequently use a range of risk management techniques while concentrating on minimizing losses and maximizing earnings. Now, what are some of the trading strategies that we have or the trading styles that we have? We have scalping, day trading, and swing trading. Now, scalping is a short-term strategy where traders try to generate rapid profits by entering and exiting orders within a short period. Now, we're just coming into, so scalpers just come into the market. They usually spend more time on the lower time frames, like the five minutes, one minute, even 30 seconds, you know, 15 minutes. The, the, the idea or the objective of scalp trading is to get in and get out within a very short time. And we have day trading, which involves opening and closing positions throughout the same trading day. So day traders look to close their positions, open and close within 24 hours or within the same um, trading day, right? They don't like to carry the trade till the next day. They seek to profit from volatility and capture intraday trends. And we have swing trading, which... Obviously, for swing traders, they hold positions from days to weeks. Swing traders look for perspective trade opportunities by analyzing both technical indicators and fundamental variables. They seek to identify price fluctuations within an overall trend. Now, most swing traders go to the higher time frames like the daily, the weekly, the monthly, uh, because obviously you're looking at the market. You're looking at the market from a very, from a long term perspective. You're looking to hold your trades for days, for weeks. So you're not going to be looking at the market on five minutes time frame as a swing trader for trend, right? You go to the higher time frames because you want to hold this trade for days or for weeks. So you want to see the higher time frames give you an idea of what's going to happen the next week, even the next month, and you can start to trade in that direction. All right. So we have scalp trading or scalpers, day trading, swing trading. There's also some other trading styles or strategies that we have, which is position trading, trend trading, and breakout trading. Now, Position trading is a long-term trading method in which traders maintain positions for several weeks, months, or even years. Now, we have the swing traders that hold for days and some weeks. We have the position traders, the Oga Pata Pata, if I should call them that. They hold for a longer period of time, right? They hold for weeks, for months, or even years. Now, they go to higher time frames, like even the yearly time frame, you know, to identify What's going to happen in the market in the next one year? What's going to happen in the next six months? They look at the higher. They look at. They look to trade or to analyze at the higher time frames um, to identify trends that have the potential to persist for a long period of time. We have trend trading, which involves identifying big market trends and trading in their direction. So with trend trading, you're looking at trading along with the trend, right? What trend are we identifying? An uptrend. Okay, I want to see the market make, you know higher lows and I can look for opportunities to buy when the market makes higher lows. That's what you want to look out for uh, with trend trading. Do you remember uptrend and downtrend? Higher highs, yes. higher lows. Higher exactly. Lows, lower. So the trend trader uh, that looks to trade in an uptrend would not buy high. The trend trader would wait for the market to make some corrections and they look for buy opportunities when the market uh, has pulled back a little bit. So identify the current trend Traders use uh, past price data and technical indicators. They plan to initiate orders when the trend has already been set and ride it until there are indicators that uh, the trend may reverse. So the trend trader tr rides the trend and continues to trade in the direction of the trend until there are indicators or patterns that this market is actually about to make a reversal. And we have breakout trading as well, which involves trading when the price breaks uh, important support and resistance levels. We're going to look at support and resistance levels today because I'm pretty sure you don't really have a good understanding on that. We didn't cover that earlier. But when the price breaks out from key levels, you know, breakout trading involves executing trades at that time. Traders carefully monitor consolidation patterns and hold off on open positions until there have been a big price changes. Now, when we talk about support and resistance and breakout uh, of support and resistance or, this, or different ways to trade support and resistance. I'll show you an example of what breakout trading looks like and also the break and retest um, strategy, how it looks like and how you can capitalize on that. We also have carry trading, momentum trading and arbitrage, arbitrage uh, trading. So carry trading is basically 
making a profit or looking to make a profit from the difference in interest rates between two distinct currencies, two different currencies. So to profit from the interest rates, traders could go long on a currency with a higher interest rate and go short on a currency with a lower interest rate. Momentum trading is where traders look at short-term price changes in assets to maximize profit. Most traders look at momentum of a reversal, the momentum of a correctional move, and also capitalize on that. They look for changes in trade volumes, recent price inflection points, and market sentiment to predict price trends. We also have arbitrage trading, which is not really uh, or not popularly used. This is where traders benefit from mispriced assets. So they look at uh, the price of an asset on a different market and look at the, that same asset, the price on another market and buy it lower on the and buy the asset lower on the market that has priced that asset lower and sell it on another market that has that asset uh, uh, with higher value. So they're trying to buy low, sell high with different markets. That's just basically how arbitrage trading works. So let me know, do you understand the different trading styles that we have in Forex trading? Yes, I understand. So which one do you think um, corresponds or goes in line with your personality? Well, most likely day trading. More of day trading. Day trading. Why do you say day trading? Um, so day trading, the trader is um trading on a daily basis, right? Like um analyzes the market and yeah checks out the time that's okay, the, the point where you want to enter the market and then place your trade, the points that is convenient for you. And then you decide to place your trade, which is better for me. Scalp trading, short term trading, uh, it doesn't really looks more like it sounds more like guessing to me. Like you're, you're rushing in and rushing out, which doesn't really sound like sound like something that I would ad, I would advise anyone to do or that I would do. So I think it's more day trading. Well, I think it's good that as traders, you know, we don't just come into the market and choose which one we want to, um, which style we want to follow. We look at a style that corresponds with our personality. I mean, if you're an impatient person, then swing trading may not work for you, you know, because now you have to hold trades for weeks and even months. And because you're impatient, that's going to affect how you react to that particular trade. Uh, so for everyone watching us right now, let me know in the comments what's your trading style or which trading style you think fits you the most. Share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, and just as Tolu has said, day trading is what works for her. She's able to open and close her trades within the day and she's going to improve on that. Meet Okta Trader, an innovative trading platform with a cutting edge analytical feed, all in one to help you reach your investment goals with one trading flow across all devices. How to start trading with Okta Trader? Download the Okta Trading app and sign up. Now proceed to create your real trading account. And once it's ready, make a deposit. Choose suitable payment method and collect your deposit bonus. But before you start trading, explore space, a customizable trading feed where you can select assets to follow and choose topics that suit your interests best. Find relevant ideas for your trading style and gain confidence in your decisions to trade with profit. Give instant feedback on trading ideas you like. Get to trading seamlessly from the feed and open an order in a few clicks. You can also set stop loss or take profit right away. Create your own strategy with other built-in tools like our indicators and our drawing tools. Create your pending orders precisely. Set the desired price. Edit or cancel at any time. All your trading statistics in one place. You can get notifications across all devices to be up to date on all relevant market events. Now you are all set for trading with OctaTrader. Start today. Why is it important to have a trading strategy? Now, creating a strategy is important, it's essential, it's a cornerstone for success. A trading strategy increases or raises the probability of success, reduces risk, and gives you purpose. Your strategy should contain you know, important objectives, prerequisites for initiating others, and information on risk management. Now, just an added uh, reason as to why it's important to have a trading strategy, right? I personally believe that 
having a, tra- a trading strategy just eliminates the idea of rapid or rash decisions, you know, buy and sell, basically just gambling in the market. Because you have an approach and you have a style, you have a trading strategy, when you come into the market, there is a systematic approach you follow to help you perceive the market from a clear point of view, right? You're not just coming to the market to start saying, today I'm seeing a lot of green candles, so I'm going to buy. Well, tomorrow, maybe I'll sell if I see a lot of red candles. You're not doing that. You have a strategy. It helps you, you know, see the market clearly for what it is, eliminates all the emotions with trading, eliminates all the rush you get from, you know, placing buy and sell. The most crucial factor to consider while developing a trading strategy is consistency. It's critical to commit to and follow a certain set of guidelines. And also, your risk will be decreased due to the elimination of trading decisions based on emotion, like I just said. Uh, the risk to reward ratio, like we've discussed, is the most crucial factor to incorporate in your trading strategy. Now, if you didn't know before, now you know this is why it's important to have a trading strategy. Uh, guys watching us right now, also you can let me know in the comments, do you guys have a trading plan? Do you even know what it is? And if you do, how consistent are you with your trading plan? Let me know in the comments. So a trading plan is a comprehensive decision-making tool for your trading activity. It helps you decide what, when, and how much to trade. This is how to create a successful trading plan. Tolu, do you have a trading plan already? Um, Kind of. Kind of. Not really. No, I have a trading journal. I have a trading so plan. So in between yes. the yes and the no, Tolu? I have a trading journal, not a trading plan. No, I don't have a trading plan. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to create a trading plan and you'd add that mm-hmm. into your trading journal. So why is a trading plan important and how can you create a successful trading plan? First, you need to outline your motivation. Why are you trading the financial markets? Do you want to be financially free? Do you want to, you know, is it for family purposes? Is it, whatever your reason is. You need to outline that. That's your why. Secondly, you need to define your goals. And as beginner traders, you don't want to set unrealistic goals, right? Maybe as you get used to the market and you start to make consistent profits, you can challenge yourself. But when you come into the market, setting unrealistic goals is not really ideal because if you don't achieve those goals, then you start to lose confidence. And that's not good for beginner traders. The time you get into the market is the time you build the confidence you need to trade consistently and make a lot of profit. So define your goals and make it realistic. Check your trading style. We've just discussed the different strategies and styles we have in the financial markets. And for everyone watching, not just Tolu, everyone watching as well, when you're choosing your trading style, choose a style that fits your personality, right? If you're an impatient person, swing trading may not really work for you because, I mean, you have to hold trades for weeks, for even months. And imagine being impatient, holding trades for weeks. Because of your personality, it could affect the decisions you would make on that trade. You see yourself trying to close the trade, you know? And uh, yeah, so make sure that your trading style fits your personality. And decide how much time you want to commit to trading. You can say, maybe I want to learn in the morning for an hour, analyze the market, trade in the evening. Just... Have an, a specific time that you want to allocate to Forex trading. If you don't do that, what you just find yourself doing is at every given time, you're opening your phone and you're checking your trades. And what that would lead to is it would lead to over trading. And over trading is not good for you as a trader. So decide how many minutes do I want to commit to trading? How many hours do I want to commit to trading? What specific time should I trade? That's what you want to decide. And it should be included in your trading plan. Decide how much capital you want to start with. And for startup capital or the decision for startup capital, it differs for different people, right? Everybody doesn't earn the same income. Everybody doesn't have the same risk tolerance. So it can be different for different people. But what I'm going to tell you that can help guide your decision making for your startup capital is use an amount or start with an amount that would help you utilize risk to reward. What do I mean by that? If you want to start trading with $10 and you want to risk 1% on a trade or at the very most 3% on a trade. 3% of $10 is 30 cents. The market only has to move three pips for your stop loss to be hit. That would not really help you 
in the market as a beginner trader, right? So you can use, that will not help you stay in the market long enough to even place more trades. You just find yourself, your stop loss will be hitting a lot of times and what happens? You start to lose money. So you should use a capital that can help you utilize risk to reward. If your 20 pips um, stop loss is ten dollars is five dollars you know just use something that can keep you comfortable in the market choose a moderate risk to reward ratio we've discussed risk to reward one percent risk at the very most three percent risk and if you're using one percent risk you should go for at least one percent reward five percent to get one percent reward is not a moderate risk to reward ratio you should include that in your trading plan choose and limit what pairs you want to trade now, and this is important for beginner traders. When you come into the market, you are advised to start with um, major pairs, you know, high liquid pairs, and scale your way through or diversify as you go on, right? If you come into the market, today you're trading GBP, USD, tomorrow you want to trade gold, next tomorrow you're trading Bitcoin, um, the day after that you're trading oil, you're trading NASDAQ. These are dynamic markets with different asset classes, right? So they don't move the same way. What that would do is just keep you confused and not knowing which one to stick to. And you don't want to be that kind of a trader. You start with one, you understand that one properly. You just, one or two, you understand them properly and you start to include other pairs or other assets. And finally, assess your knowledge of the Forex market. Regardless of how much you're making from the market, you always have to tell yourself, what am I doing? Are there things I'm doing wrong? What am I doing I'm better? How can I improve on you know, the things that I'm doing wrong. How can I stop them? How can I do even more better things so that I can be a very confident and comfortable trader? The learning process never stops. You should always create a vacuum for more information. The market evolves. It's a dynamic market. It's always evolving. There are new uh, things that happen in the world that can change directions of the market. So you always want to assess knowledge so that you can adapt and adopt new strategies. So these are eight um, things that you should that can help you, you know, create a successful trading plan. Tolu and everyone watching, let me know if you, well, Tolu can let me know in the comments, but everyone watching, you can let me know if you understand in the comments. And Tolu, tell me, do you understand these um, steps to creating a trading plan? Yes, I do. Okay. Now we're going to look at chart patterns and you still identify some patterns we have in the Forex market, just like we have different trading styles there are also uh, different patterns that you can explore in the forex market today we're going to look at uh, some of the main chart patterns we have in the forex market and the first one we're talking about is triangle chart patterns now a triangle chart patterns involves price moving into a tighter and tighter range or call it an apex as time goes by and it provides a visual display of battle between bulls and bears. We have the ascending triangle pattern and we have the descending triangle pattern. Now, the ascending triangle pattern is a type of triangle chart pattern that occurs when there is a resistance level and a slope of higher lows. When you hear ascending, what direction comes into your mind? Upwards. Upwards, right? When you hear descending, what direction comes into your mind? Downwards. Downwards. Okay, I have to ask you, have you practiced or have you used any chart patterns or indicators you know which of these chart patterns or indicators have caught your attention if you've used anyone in the past let me know have you no i haven't i haven't okay, well that's that's too great because you're going to learn about some really important patterns um today and also indicators as well so as you're exploring your different trading styles you also get to encounter various chart patterns and because you have the understanding after today's training they would not seem foreign to you now an easy way or a simple way rather to understand whatever you see in the forex markets is to take the definition and apply to what you see on your chart right now we have an ascending triangle of course, when there is a resistance level and slope of higher lows, right? Now, this is what it looks like. Resistance level and a slope of higher lows. We have higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low. A slope of higher lows and we have the resistance level. You can see what direction is this going? Upwards. Upwards, exactly. Now, for the descending triangle, we have 
a string of lower highs that forms the upper line, which is the resistance. And the lower line is support level, which the price cannot seem to break. We have the resistance here that is drawn across the lower highs. Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. We can see the resistance level drawn across. And we have the support level that the price cannot seem to break. Usually the triangle pattern is a continuation pattern and a downtrend, in a downtrend, when the triangle pattern forms, where is the trend expected to continue? Up or down? Down. Down. Perfect. Do you understand how triangle patterns work? Yes, I do. All right. We have the triple top pattern. And the triple top pattern is, is just like the double top. You remember when we talked about double top, double bottom, head and shoulders, all that? Yes. The triple top pattern is just like the double top. The difference is that instead of two tops, it has three tops. The triple top chart pattern so it's consists... It's basically the same thing. Yes, it's a reversal, but... Okay, let me just show you there. This is what it looks like. But the triple top is stronger because for price to reject three times, it, it means that there's a high chance that it's going to reverse. Right? The, the triple top is stronger than the double top. The triple top indicates strong um, reversal, strong uh, reversal potential, or a strong potential for bearish reversal. And this is what it looks like. You can see the market rallying to the top side, bounced off two, bounced off three, and boom, proceeds to break below the neckline. And an opposite of the triple top would be the double bottom, or the triple bottom, rather, where instead of a bearish reversal, now we have a bullish reversal, right? The triple bottom occurs at the bottom of a downtrend. The triple top occurs at the top of an uptrend. And this is what the triple bottom looks like. We have a downtrend, a strong bullish reversal, and what happens? We see the market, boom. Break above the resistance like you have here. This is the resistance. Break above and pushes to the top side. For the triple top, it breaks below support. For the triple bottom, it breaks above resistance. Do you understand? Yes. Now, we have an interesting one as well, which is known as the cup and handle pattern. The cup and handle pattern, which is shaped like a teacup with a handle, is a, bu is a bullish continuation pattern. The cup, which is the bottom component, is produced by a slow fall in price and a rounded consolidation. And the handle, which is the middle element, is a shorter consolidation phase with a little downward drift in price. These two sections work together to make the pattern. What are the features? Like I said, we have the rounded bottom, which shows you that the there's a change in power, or a potential change in power from sellers to buyers. We have the handle, which serves as a, co a consolidation and you're looking at well, how the market reacts to that consolidation because you want to trade the breakout of that consolidation. And the cup and handle pattern is important because it indicates that buyers are taking the initiative and a bullish continuation is probably in store after a consolidation or a protracted decline. This is what it looks like. We have the bullish move, the bullish trend, the sales taking over, but we're seeing a change in power here. As you can see, the buyers are gradually coming back to take control. Retest at this previous resistance. We're seeing the pullback, which is going to serve as the handle. Sometimes this can move in a straight line, in a straight range. But what you're looking out for is a break out of this uh, handle. And I will be more comfortable trading when the market has broken out of this resistance level then I can be very confident that um, this, or very comfortable that this is a potential bullish move uh, from the cup and handle pattern in that market. Do you understand the cup and handle pattern? Yes, I understand. We have the rising wedge and the falling wedge. These are wedge patterns. And this can serve as either a continuation or a reversal pattern. One important thing about the wedge pattern, just like you have here, the rising wedge, the bottom line, the bottom trend line slope upwards at a smaller angle than the upper trend line, which also slopes upward. And as you can see, this served at this market as a reversal pattern. And you can see here as well, the falling wedge also served as 
a reversal pattern. Sometimes it serves as a continuation pattern. The important thing you should notice or you should note with chart patterns is that first, you want the pattern to form and you want to see how the market reacts after the, the pattern has been formed. When you see it, um, and I'll show you this with support and resistance very well. When you see a pattern being formed, right, you don't just say, well, this is going to break, except you see this candlestick that has signified bearish momentum break out of this trend line. We could still have, okay. if this doesn't happen, we could still have a pullback to the upside and you see the market continuing to the top side, right? So for chart patterns, you want the market to form, you want the pattern to form, and you want to see how the market reacts after that formation. Do we have a breakout or do we have a continuation in the range or do we have a reversal? So you want to be patient to identify what the market does after a chart pattern has been formed. Let me know if you have any questions on these advanced chart patterns that we discussed. No, not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Whenever you have questions, I'm here to answer all your questions. What about now? We were talking about indicators. Do you know about indicators? No. Nope. Okay. No, I don't. So I, it's good because now you're going to know about indicators. Now, indicators can be powerful tools, you know, when you use them correctly. It's like having a compass, you know, a compass, right? In the vast sea yes. of the Forex market. So today we're going to look at some indicators like RSI, we look at moving average, which are popularly used indicators. And I'll show you how they really work. Does that sound good? Yes. yes it does. All right. What's a trading indicator? Indicators are tools or metrics used in technical analysis to help traders and investors make informed decisions about buying or selling assets. They provide visual or numerical insights to price trends, momentum, volatility, and other market aspects assisting in financial or assisting in analyzing financial markets and potential future price movements. We have some indicators like the moving average indicator, the SMA, which is a simple moving average indicator, exponential moving average, and the relative strength index. And we'll be talking about all these indicators today. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So a moving average indicator is commonly used in the market as a technical indicator that calculates the average price of an asset over a specified period. It helps to smooth out price data and provides a clearer picture of the asset's overall trend. Now, if you look at this diagram right now, you'd see that we have the market, the candlesticks indicating, you know, open, high, low, and close of price. And we have this blue line up here. This is the moving average. Now, without this, without looking at this market, the moving average has already told me that we are headed downwards. Can you see that? It has smoothened out the noise from the market and it has given me a direction that we're headed downwards. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Exactly. Now we have simple moving average and exponential moving average. And there are ways to trade not just um smoothing out or you know smoothening out the uh price data. There are other advantages of the moving average and I'll talk to you about them. Let's start with the simple moving average. It's straightforward, it's widely used in the Forex market, and it calculates this, the average of a set data point over a specified period. Simple moving averages are known for their simplicity and are also commonly used for long-term trend analysis. What are some of the advantages of simple, simple moving average? It's easy to understand and it's easy to implement. It smooths out the noise and fluctuations in data. And disadvantages, it can lag behind uh, recent price changes and it is not ideal for short-term trading strategies. We have the exponential moving average, which is the EMA. And the EMA pays close attention to market data. It's another highly popularly um, moving average, particularly favored for short-term analysis and trading strategies. Now, unlike the SMA, the EMA assigns different ways or different ways to data points, emphasizing on recent data. I'll show you how they look like. Uh, one second. 
let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of EMA. Then I'll show you how these indicators look like. Okay. The EMA quickly okay. captures recent price action. So it pays close attention to recent price data. The SMA is not doesn't really pay close attention. It's not really, it's not close enough to the price. It gives a little bit of a distance, it delays a little bit. And the EMA is also ideal for short-term traders and active market participants, scalpers, day traders. It's important for you guys. Disadvantages. It's more complex to calculate than the SMA. That's one. And it can be sensitive to market noise and false signals in choppy markets. You could easily get caught up in a, in a false breakout or in a fake out when you use an EMA than when you use the SMA uh, moving average. So these are the two types of moving averages we have, the, the exponential moving average and the simple moving average. I've discussed the differences, the advantages, and the disadvantages. Do you understand them? Yes, I do. All right. Do you have any questions concerning that? No. Nope. No questions. All right. Now we are going to talk about relative strength index, which is also another popularly used indicator in the Forex market. Now, the relative strength index measures the strength of price movements and potential reversals on a scale of 0 to 100. The values above 70 suggest overbought conditions, while the values below 30 indicate oversold conditions. Traders use RSI to identify entries and exit points and assess the trend strength. What is the advantage of the RSI? It's clear and serves as a clear and simple signal for easy use by traders. It's also applicable to various financial instruments. And disadvantages, the market may stay in the overbought and oversold conditions for extended periods in strong trends, leading to potential false signals. So when the market is oversold or overbought, it could stay there, it could rally there, maybe create some divergence. So just rally at oversold, oversold or overbought um, levels for a while, and you see that most of the people that start to sell or most of the people that sold when the market was just overbought, their stop loss gets take out. Most of the people that buys or that bought when the market was oversold, their stop loss would also get um, taken out as well. That's one of the disadvantages. And again, it's very important that when you're using indicators, regardless of the type, RSI, EMA, Fibonacci, Bollinger Bands, you use these indicators with other technical analysis methods for better accuracy. Now, this is an example of the RSI. Let me show you what I was saying, right? We have 30, 70. When the market is trading above 70, this can be seen as overbought. It can be seen that the asset is overbought. When it's trading below 30, it can be seen that the market is oversold. Do you understand? No, yes, I do. Now, most times, just like you have here, the markets may have gone below oversold levels and you see traders just start to buy because it's oversold. And what happens? The market even goes lower to 20 before it starts to move back above the 30 level. From here to here, a lot of stop losses would have been taken out before this recovery. The same thing for the overbought level. Maybe as the market started to push back down, most traders will start to sell. And what happens? The market started to go upwards slightly even higher before it pushed to the downside. So that's one of the disadvantages of trading uh, the RSI, which is why you should uh, add the RSI to other, you know, just implement extra analysis to the RSI, not just trade uh, indicators in isolation. Whenever you're at oversold levels, you want to look at if there's a potential divergence, you want to look at the chart and see if you're at a key level, just combine with multiple uh, confluences before you're confident to take the trades. But the objective of the, of the RSI shows you overbought conditions, which is where you're expected to sell, and oversold conditions, which is where you're expected to buy. Do you understand the RSI? Yes, I do. All right, this is the part where you get to ask me questions. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me the questions right now. Right now, I don't have any. Probably after practicing. Okay. I would have. Okay, I'll be here to um, answer any questions that you have. But we're going to move over to section two, 
where we talk about support and resistance. I would show you how they work. I would introduce you into backtesting and optimization strategies. For those of you watching, if your brain feels like it's on overload, take a breath out. You can grab a snack, stretch your legs, or just chill out for a bit. We'll still be here when you're ready to dive back in. But if you're revved up and ready for more, then let's keep the momentum going. Remember that you can ask all your burning questions in the Telegram chat. Are you ready? Let's do this. Are you ready for section two? Yes. Yes. All right. Now, before we get into section two, um, I told you to execute some trades and we're going to do a review of the trades that you executed. Um, let's see. So we're going to go ahead and explain the trades. We'll just do a review of the trades and, you know, we'll identify what went wrong, what you could have done right and just help you improve uh, further trades or subsequent trades that you place in the Forex market. Are you ready, Tolu? Yes, I am. Uh, we have this first trade that you took $8.90 in profit. It's already a closed trade. And we have this one. Uh, and this is still a demo account for you guys watching. So Lou hasn't started trading on a live account yet. Uh, but in the next session, we're going to start trading on a live account. So this is just the practice that she did. Uh, a take-home assignment I gave to Lou in the last episode. 5.7 four dollars in profit from this trade do you mind telling me you know the analysis behind this trade at the time you know what made you place these trades and um i see that you have other trades as well gbp jpy three dollars and you had a loss on gold here 4.67 dollar loss uh, generally great results but I need to hear the analysis behind these trades. Basically, it is there's been signals, they're not really signals from the Opta app. Okay. For like these two, two two currencies you're looking at, um GPP, JPY and XAU USD. Okay. I, I decided to follow follow news specifically on it from Opta and I get to see, I get to see all the um, what's the word now? The analysis, all the chart patterns, the analysis, yeah. the calendar, exactly. So, um, once once I see probably something like um, GBP, GBP, GBP JPY is um, forming a bearish pattern and um, um, looks like the the Bears are um are in control at the moment. I don't know if in control is the right yes, word. Yeah, okay. It is. Okay. Okay. So I I use news information like that to trade. To execute the trade. Perfect. To execute that's, the trade. That's and, awesome. Okay. And then um I tried to do the one to two, one to three um um lot Risk size. Reward. Really to reward ratio. No, 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 not the lot size. The lot size I've been using is 0 0.01, which is um micro. Yeah. Trying to minimize risk. I feel like I think I feel safe with that. So I try to minimize risk and try to control my emotions so that um like I don't go beyond that 0 0.01. And then um my risk to reward ratio has been one to two max, one to three. So I don't get like so that I just stay disciplined and not too emotional or not emotional at all. Okay. Uh it's amazing that you're taking advantage of the expert ideas from the Octa Trading app. I remember I just told you to practice, you know, open trades. Um I also remember saying you don't have to do any analysis. I just wanted to open any trade and just see how it works. And when you learn about like today you learned about uh you're going to learn about support and resistance you've learned about some extra patterns you can do analysis yourself but it's good to see that you went uh, extra mile to you know get uh, trade ideas understand these patterns understand when the bears are about to take over and execute trades based on that analysis one thing i'm going to correct you on 
I mean, you said you're risking 1%. So I don't know how you're getting your 1% because 1% of your balance here would be about $50, right? Which means that your profits should be more than this, which means you shouldn't even be using a micro lot in the first place. So for a micro lot, this is almost 90 pips. Let's just say almost 90 pips, right? Now, if you use the actual lot size you should use when you risk 1%, you'll be getting way more than this. Your profits would be in the $200, $300 range. So what you can do is, can you hear me, Tolu? Yes, yes. I'm trying to follow what you're saying. So, so okay, let me help you understand. When you say 1%, to 3% risk to reward. What's your 1%? Um, let's see. Exactly. The 1% is the 1% of your account balance. Now, 1% of this account balance is $50. So your lot size should tally with that 1%, with that $50. For example, how many pips is going to give you $50 risk? let's say 20 pips, right? You want to risk 20 pips. What loss size should I use? We did this calculation in the last video. So watch it again so that the next time you're trading um, with an account size like this, you use a loss size that can give you, you know, if you're saying you're risking 1%, then you're risking $50 out of $5,000. This is less than 1% risk. Okay, this so I, I, this this just reminded me of a question I actually had. Okay. I just forgot to note it down. Um, so um, for instance, let's say after doing all the analysis, reading the news, and checking um updates from Okta Trader, yeah. I then decide to maybe place a trade, and the market at that point is probably um I don't know if I'm right about this. Maybe I'm making an entry at it is twenty twenty eight point zero eight. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So what, what I was doing, I think I understand what you're saying. Now, what I was doing was I just maybe subtract like one or two from that. Okay, so instead of saying, instead of I'm going at 20, 28, for instance, and then I subtract like maybe two, 26, 24, two I pips. use that for my, for my, for yes, pip, two pips for my stop loss and then add or 20 pips for rather. the profit. Okay, so, so uh, that's yeah, wrong, on, right? Um, do you understand my question? Your entries may not always be the same. You can have your own entry based on what you see from the market. But what I'm trying to correct here is not the entry. I'm trying to correct the lot size itself. Okay, the lot size itself. Okay, yes, okay, okay, okay. the lot size is not 1% risk. 1% risk of $5,000 is $50. 50. So you're using way less than that. Do you understand? I'm using like, okay, zero. It doesn't matter what percentage you're using. The fact is... No, no, I'm using... trying to find out what I'm using. I'm not using so one, what... I'm using below one. Yes, okay, let's leave what you're using. Let's focus on what I want you to use. I want you to use 1% okay. risk. 1%. 1% or 2%. You, you have so to get the calculations right now. So 1% risk would be $50. 2% risk would be $100. 100. Exactly. Okay. For this account size, okay? So you're going to go back, watch the video where we did the calculation on lot size so you can get your calculations right, get your lot size right. If you don't get it right, sometimes you use low lot size and make huge profit. And then sometimes you decide to use big lot size and make small and make huge loss as well. Okay, so adequate lot size from the start, and then we start to move on from there. But generally, uh, it's a great result that I'm seeing. I think we had just one loss here. Is it the same with this one? I think it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same. So just one loss, and good. It's good. It's good, generally. Um, you're doing great. Get the calculation right so that the next time we review your trades, um, the lot size will be adequate and we can take it on from there.
I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and we can get back into section two. Are you with me, Tolu? Yes, I am. All right. So now we're going to discuss um, support and resistance. I'll just introduce you to support and resistance so you can get an idea of these key levels we're talking about. Support is a price at which an asset's downward trend will likely stop, attracts buying activity, and possibly even reverse course. It functions as a floor to stop the price from dropping even further. Resistance is the price point at which an asset's upward trend will likely halt, come under pressure from sellers, and possibly even reverse course. It serves as a ceiling on the price, halting further price increase. Finding support and resistance levels is finding past levels and marking where the price had difficulty breaking through. I'm going to show you some of the key points of support and resistance, and then we can go over the uh, illustration of support and resistance. What are some of the key points? Role reversal. A degree of support may turn into a level of reversal or a level of resistance once it's broken and vice versa. And why does this happen? Traders or market participants who missed the original move may try to enter or exit positions at this level. It's a phenomenon that is known as role reversal. Strength. There can also be a range in amount of resistance and support. Higher levels are usually ones where there have been several price reversals signifying a substantial amount of buying and selling activity. And we also have breakouts, which is where a price break through a support and resistance level with significant fault or force can indicate a possible shift in the trend. Now we have resistance level here. We have support level here. Remember, the support level serves as the floor. The resistance level serves as where? The ceiling. The ceiling. Now, if you take a ball and you throw it at the ceiling and it bounces off at the ceiling, where does it land? Back to the floor. Back to the floor. If it bounces over the floor with enough force and it pushes all the way up, where is it headed to? The ceiling. Good. So that's just how it works. Resistance and support levels. And if this ball has enough force to break above the ceiling, and it bounces back, where does it bounce at? Back to the support level. Where's the support level, Tolu? Support level is the floor. Down. No. Repeat your question. So, <laughs> so Repeat your question. If we take the ball and we bounce it on the floor, it breaks above the ceiling breaks through the ceiling and it's turning back where does it okay, land first it falls back on the resistance level it falls back on the ceiling and the ceiling is going to serve as what it's going to serve as the new that's the, the new support level amazing so let me show you how it works right we have support level broken and when the market reverses it's headed back to the to the resistance uh, to the previous support level, which is now serving as resistance level. It's called neural level. When we have this multiple retest at support level and we finally break below it, the market tends to go back, retest again. Why does this happen? Remember, traders who missed the original move may try to enter or exit positions at these levels, as you can see here. So this, has not, this is now going to serve as new resistance for this market. This was previously support and now it's serving as new resistance. We can also have it, we can also have a, what we call level testing where the price tried to make a test here but couldn't break through it. Came back again to make another retest. Couldn't break through it. And usually after this retest we could have a massive fall to the downside. But if we break above it, then we start to trade above this support level. We can also move the support and resistance uh, levels, or we can also have a market that moves in a support and, within the support and resistance level. We can call that a ranging market. You can see how it bounces off at support, bounces off at resistance. It can't seem to break through any of these levels. And when this happens, at some point, there's going to be a huge breakout and a trend follows. 
right? So when the market consolidates for a long period of time, it cannot consolidate forever. There's always going to be a breakout, either to the upside or to the downside. But before that, you can always take advantage of the um, range by selling off at resistance levels and buying off from support levels. Again, if you want to do this, risk management is key and also use candlestick as your final point of confirmation. We have level breakouts, which is, like I said, the breakout I told you about where the market tries to break below a level. In this case, support couldn't break below. Finally, breaks below at this point makes a retest. A breakout is a potential trading opportunity that occurs when the price moves above a resistance level or, as you can see here, breaks below a support level. And what do we see? We've seen the market trade below that support level come to make a retest. If we're not able to break above, what happens? The market continues to trade below this support level. Let me give you a visual example on in on a live chart, how it should look like on a live chart. All right. So if you look here, you can see that we have the market moving in a range. Like I said, you can you can take advantage of ranging markets if you sell at resistance and buy at support. You can take advantage of this move. And if you look here, you'll see the market broke above resistance level, pulled back. And what did resistance flip to? It came support. The market couldn't break below it. And what happened? It continued to the upside. This can serve as a flag pattern, as you can see here. Boom break and continue so how do you trade with support and resistance let me give you three important steps first know your trading preference are you a day trader scalper swing trader that can help you know the time frames you want to look out for the time frames you want to look and expect or identify your support and resistance or your supply and demand zones secondly you can either trade the bounce or thirdly you can trade the break now if you're trading the bounce you want to boost the odds in your favor and find some confirmation of a hold of support and resistance. If you choose to trade the bounce, this is what I mean by the bounce. Where you see these arrows, this is the bounce. Bounce, 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 bounce. Remember when I told you that, I give you the example of taking the ball and, you know, bounce it, it goes up, it comes down. That's the bounce. The market is bouncing at this point and it's moving in a range. That's one way to trade support and resistance. Another way to do it is to trade the break the breakout. Now, there are two methods of trading the breakout. You can buy or sell whenever price breaks through the zone, but this is more risky than the second method, which is where you buy at the retest or sell at the retest after the breakout. Let me give you an example, right? So, if you choose to buy where when the market just breaks out, just like you have here, we have a breakout here, but we don't have any confirmation, right? We just have this candlestick that broke out. And what happened? This was a false breakout because the market pushed back into and below this resistance level. So if you had bought here, put your stop loss here, put your take profit somewhere up, this, pro this trade would have been an unprofitable trade. That's one of the disadvantages of trading the breakout just as it happens. But if you're patient enough to trade a breakout and the retest, just like you have here, breakout and the retest, you can see that the market continues to push to the upside. And now you would have made more profits than you would have, you would make more profit than you would have made if you just traded from here to here. If you just traded at this breakout, maybe you'd have closed some profits here when you start to see some pullbacks. But you can see that when the market made a retest, it moved higher. There was no significant pullback like this one that you have here. So you get more comfortable when you trade at the retest, break and retest, not just the breakout. You, you could fall into, uh, you could be a victim of false breakouts and you don't want to, you don't want to get caught up in false breakouts in the market. You can also see here, false breakouts. You don't want to get caught up in all this. So you want to see break, also here, false breakout as well because we had the market breakout and pulled back even way below into the resistance. So those are some of the ways that you can trade moving averages. You can trade the bounce and you can also trade the break.
you can see here as well, these are extra examples of the breakout and retest. We have the breakout, we have the retest. Boom, continuous trend to the upside. Indecision candlestick, obviously showing you that there's the bears, there's no momentum here. It's indecisive. Neither, neither the buyers or the sellers were able to take advantage of this candlestick. Bullish candlestick momentum and what happens? We said to go to the top side. Do you understand? Yes, please. I do. All right. In the next section, we're gonna do a we're gonna have a practical uh section where we put support and resistance, chart patterns, indicators, trading styles into practice. We're gonna have a live session and we put all this into practice. We're gonna do what we call back testing. And what is back testing and why is it important? Back testing and strategy optimization are very important components of trading it's like where you're testing out you know what has happened in the market it can also be what is happening in the market the goal of back testing is to assess a, the performance of a trading style or a strategy using data from the past or also from the present as well um, you can also look at the market and go to your demo account and choose to practice as it's going on that can also serve as back testing but mainly it's looking at historical price data identifying what happened why it's happened and how you can use that to predict future price movements do you have any questions for me tolu no 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 questions at all all right you know how this goes if you don't have questions for me i have questions for you I'm going to go ahead and ask you the questions I have for you. All right. The first question. Which moving averages pay the most attention to recent traders' behavior? This question is tricky. We have, let me give you a hint. We have two types of moving averages. We have the simple moving average and the exponential moving average. So which of these moving averages pay the most attention to recent traders' behavior? Is a short term analysis, short term analysis of trading. So I think it's the exponential moving average. What did you say? Exponential moving average. That is correct. The support line is drawn above. The support line is drawn above where the price fails to break. Is it true or false? False. Where the, price the support line drawn? Fails Support line is drawn below. Resistance is above. Support line Amazing. Is All right. Final question. Outline five steps in choosing your trading style. Okay. So, um, outline your motivation. Mm -hmm. Define your goals. Mm -hmm. Check your trading style. Decide how much time you want to commit to trading. Decide how much time you want to commit to trading and decide how much capital you choose to start with. So you just read all that. You just read it out loud. You didn't even you didn't even hide your My face. You, just, you literally just read it. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'll 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 make the questions a bit complex where you have to calculate and crack your brain. That's what I'm going to do. But it did amazing anyway. And um, yeah, it's a wrap for today's episodes. Like I said, the next episode, we're going to do a practice and back test. And it's important that you understand that back testing is like a trial run before the big race. It's like a simulation of a strategy using historical price data. And in the next episode, we're going to do some live sessions. We're going to do some back testing and we'll put that live back test into practice. Does it sound good? Sure, it does. It's been an insightful journey that we've had today on the You Too Can Show with Okta. We've covered a lot, Solu. Tell me, what did you enjoy about today's session? Everything, actually. What was, the, what, was the best part? The what was the best part of today's session? Well, I think the best part for me is um the part where you answered my question no 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 where you observed the lot size part for me i actually didn't know that i was making a mistake with that 
or I was calculating wrongly and I'm going to go back to work on it and adjust properly. I think that was the best side, best part for me. That's so, yes, beautiful. I want to be able to know my lot size pro um, right, know, um, calculate the lot size, know the right pips to use and all of that. So I think that's, that's like my major, because I know for my next trading, it's definitely going to be better because I'm going to be calculating my lot size properly. Amazing, amazing. So and I've next always been curious come... about support and resistance. Now I understand better. Beautiful, beautiful. And everyone watching as well, go ahead and let me know in the comments what the best part of today's session was. Thank you guys for all the attention and the replies in the comments. If you have any questions, you can drop your questions and let me know if you learned something new today. For everyone of you that wants to embark on your trading journey, remember, practice makes improvements. Keep learning, keep growing. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the Octa Broker YouTube channel so that you can get notified when we release new episodes and we tackle all the exciting topics in the Forex market. In the next episode, we're going to discuss, we're going to have a live trading session. We're going to have a discussion of setups, uh, trading setups analysis, and Tolu would learn how to make trading decisions in real time. We'll also have a Q&A session as well. And while you're waiting, join our Telegram channel. And if you if you get access or if you join this Telegram channel, you would have uh, access to educational materials, links, and you also get to connect with like-minded traders and improve in your trading activity and also potentially make profits from the Forex market. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you all. And thank you, Tolu, for joining me today again. It's bye, everyone.